Hi, welcome to my video, welcome to my channel, and welcome to another day in quarantine, which is how we are continuing to live our lives, even though some restrictions have been lifted in Toronto. Today I'm sharing a recipe for a very delicious, decent sambar. We are not experts when it comes to South Indian cooking over here, but we have been able to master a few dishes to our satisfaction, sambar being one of them, which is such an important accompaniment to so many other dishes. On Monday, I showed you how to make the sambar powder, which is the spice mix you're going to need. And today I'm going to show you how to make the entire sambar start to finish. So let's get started. Just like Monday's video, Pranav is going to be doing most of the demonstrating and I am going to be doing the narrating. So when it comes to sambar, I really like to think of it as an amalgamation of four things. The dal, the sambar powder, some vegetables, and finally a bit of tempering. The easiest thing to get started with is the dal because that is the base of this very hearty vegetable stew. And we're using tur dal. This is very specific to sambar. No other dal will taste right. Okay, so definitely use tur dal. You want to rinse this as many times as it takes until the water runs completely clear. It could be three times, four times, but you want to make sure and do this very, very thoroughly. Then add some water to the dal in your pressure cooker, set it over high heat, and let it cook for two whistles. By the way, all of the measurements are down below for you in the description box. While the dal is steaming, we can work on our sambar powder. And I've already shared exactly how to do this on Monday. So if you haven't seen that video, go and check out the sambar powder video. It's essentially a spice blend of some roasted spices and some dal ground to a fine powder. And we're gonna add that to our sambar a little later on in this process. Next come our vegetables, and I am using very simple vegetables, tomato, onion, and bindi, or okra. You can use whatever you have on hand, potato, carrot, eggplant, just chop everything to roughly the same size. We're gonna get started in a stock pot with a little bit of oil over medium high heat, and we are going to saute these vegetables. This is optional, you could just put them in the pot and add some water and bring it up to a boil, but I think cooking them a little bit helps to bring out some of the natural flavors of the vegetables. Then add enough water to simply cover the vegetables, close up the pot and bring this up to a light boil. And while the vegetables are getting there, we can use this time to check on our tur dal, which has hopefully whistled twice in the cooker. And as long as that's happened, you can switch off the stove and remove the pressure cooker from the hot element. Just allow the steam to escape naturally. Once that happens and you open it up, the dal should look, I want to say completely pulverized, okay? <laughs> you need to mash this dal even further, even though it is clearly mushy. You need to mash it against the side of the cooker using a spoon or a spatula to make it as smooth as possible. This is a very smooth preparation when it comes to sambar. We don't want any chunks of dal in the stew. And by now it's probably time to rescue our vegetables. One of the underlying flavors in a sambar is a sweet and tangy note. So to bring that in, we're going to use some tamarind paste. Now this is a pretty chunky paste, so it needs to be softened and dissolved using just some of the vegetable broth from the pot itself. You can see Pranav is taking a few karchis, a few spoons of that broth, and he's using it to soften and dissolve this chunky paste. Of course, if you're using fresh tamarind, this is gonna be a lot easier, but this is all we have access to, so it requires a little bit of uh, innovation in order to get it to the right consistency. So we can put that tamarind aside and add our sambar powder. We're also gonna season with a little bit of salt, and for a bit of color, we're gonna add some haldi or turmeric powder. At this point, things should be starting to smell really good. Our tamarind is as dissolved as we can hope for, so we're going to go ahead and add that as well. And getting very close to the end here, it is time to add our dal to the stock pot. I made a very poor joke with Pranav and I asked him why he was not able to find a smaller pot, which is just, you know, a backhanded way of saying that this pot is too small. But we managed to get all of the dal in there, and we do have larger stock pots, I promise, but we got it all in there. 
And now the sambar needs to come together for the last time at a rolling boil. So turn up the heat, cover it up. Hopefully after a minute or two, it looks something like this. We are very close to the end of this multi-step process. We're gonna add a little bit of chopped dhania or cilantro for a hint of freshness. And the very last thing we have to do is our tempering. So we have some mustard seeds, whole red chilies, and curry leaves. In addition to that, we're gonna be adding a little bit of hing or asafoetida. My hing usually has to be ground to a fine powder in my mortar and pestle. And then all of these ingredients need to be roasted in some oil over high heat until the mustard seeds spatter. And then this whole thing is applied directly on top of the samba. And of course, you are gonna mix it up using your ladle or a spoon or something, but this tempering just kicks it up a notch. It just brings all of the flavors together. It adds a complexity to your samba, which is already, I think, a very complex dish. Now on this particular day, we were enjoying our sambar with some idlis and some coconut chutney. So that's what you're seeing here. I can always share the recipe for the coconut chutney, the idlis. Honestly, I'm not very good at making idlis, so it's going to take me a little while to perfect that. But here you have an idea of what the complete meal looked like for us. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe and that you give it a try. If you are like us, people who love South Indian food but who are not experts at it, this is a very simple way to make, as I said, a decent sambar. So if you give it a try, do let us know. And I hope you subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and I hope you're staying safe and well above everything. See you soon. Bye-bye.